1v1 tournament. But yeah, June 2v2 tournament is next week, 9 a.m. UTC. Sign up, find a partner, and play. And don't worry if you don't think you're that good because, honestly, 2v2 is more open to upsets than 1v1 is. And even 1v1, just play. I mean, you get a lot better playing tournaments than you do playing just casual matches like this. Or casual exhibition matches and so forth. Just playing practice matches? No, no, no. Tournaments, that's where you really see players pull out all the stops and you really learn a lot. But anyway, enough with that. Let's get on to the game. This is going to be on... Give me on Vitra. And starting out, we have Never in the southwest corner going for Glowbot Factory. One cut going for the Spiderbot Factory in the southeast. And on the north side, we have N42K going for Shield Factory and Dynefriend going for Glowbot Factory. And if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Dynefriend. Friend. No, that's not right. That'd be UE. Dynefriend. I'll just go with Dynefriend. Anyway, Dynefriend is going for more of an economic opening, getting a couple raiders first off. We do have N42K, which, who went for a lot of bandits right off the bat. As did Never, although in his case went primarily for Glaives, and one cut going... He went for a lot of Fleas at first, and then going for Weaver. So, basically we have kind of an even split between one aggro and one defensive player. So, Never is also expanding along the west side of the map, and N42K is very quickly set up. He's set up to raid. He is very ready. He's going to go in and just tear this apart. And he can. He very much can. These bandits are in a great spot to do so. There's no real resistance. There's just the one conjurer. That is not going to do him all that much good. So, and Dying from getting quite a heavily attacked by Never. Never is going to be able to get rid of, he's got rid of one melee extractor, getting rid of a second melee extractor, and these glaives will go down to the defender if nothing else. Although at the same time, a flea is stopping this conjurer from building that defender in question. So, that defender actually is not there. These glaives could go around or they could have, the Dying Friend's Glaives are getting in the way, so that's not going to help out too much. But Never is able to get away from that, able to escape, and take out a couple of Dying Friend's me Metal Extractors. That means Never and One Cut are quite ahead economically. In total, they are ahead by about 4 or 5 Metal, which at 2 minutes in the game is not bad. However, N42K going for a bit of a revenge. This is what I mentioned before, the Bandit is in, and it is getting rid of the Conjurer. Conjurer can't even build a Lotus in time, can't even escape. This Conjurer is dead. Farewell, we hardly knew ye. He built a nice metal extractor, though. Shame something happened to it. Anyway, Never is still ready to raid. He could raid if he wanted to in the northeast side of the map. And One Cut is ready with some Venoms. He's going for, looks like Venom Flea Redback. Not a bad setup. And getting a quick Caretaker. I think this is a little too soon. He doesn't have enough metal extractors to really make the Caretaker work. He needs to get probably about two or three more. Yeah, looks like he has this one here. Yeah, and then a couple more. That would give him enough metal to make it worth it. Dying actually, with the Reclaim, he does have a decent amount of metal to work with. But without Reclaim, he is still behind. So both... I mean, the South players are doing just a little bit better. And never actually harassing N42K's Metal Extractor. Nice dodge in that Glaive, too, by the way. That was controlled. And that wasn't just auto-dodge. That was actually controlled... Sorry. Yeah, Glaive versus Rogue. So a little bit easier dodge than versus Rocco. But still a good dodge. Never managed to get out of that. Take out a metal extractor and escape. So nice raid. Clean. Very clean. I like that. And one cut is setting up Redbacks with Venoms along with some fleas. Redback and Venom is the main force here. The fleas are basically there for scouting and spotting. Maybe a bit for damage, but not much beyond that. And never coming in on the west side of the map. Gonna be dealing a fair amount of damage actually. Getting through here. Pretty effectively gonna get rid of the convict and the bandits and rogues gonna go down soon after. Unfortunately, one of the rogues gets a really nice shot in there. And the glaive, uh, four glaives go down in the process, but the rogues also go down, and one bandit against two glaives, though immediately two damaged glaives. Never knows he can't take that, and runs away. Actually, there's two bandits, so actually he can't take that. But one cut attack, and Dynefront, Dynefront is a little bit better prepared, though. He does have these glaives close up to each other. The Venom, unfortunately, for it, not able to get a shot in, but one of the glaives does go down for free. And for 2 k coming along the west side, and will be able to... Well, run into Never's Glaives. However, one cut is dealing a bit more damage. Dying from losing yet another Glaive from the looks of it. it. No, this Redback not quite able to get in range. The Redback is unfortunately too far away. Rather unfortunate for it, but that is the case. 
And we are seeing, actually, a switch over to Recluse Red, okay, Recluse Redback and Venom. Yeah, Recluse Redback, Venom, that is what we're going for. No more fleas, which should be fine. Although the fleas are really good for scouting. You want to throw them out from time to time. Just throw half a dozen fleas into your opponent's base. They'll die, yeah, but they'll see what's going on. That's what you want. That's what you need. You need to know what your opponent's up to. Anyway, west side of the map, we do have Never coming in and taking out another one of N42K's bases. Yet again, tearing apart a metal extractor. Not even a base, just a metal extractor. Tearing apart a Lotus in construction. Did, never has been... What does he have for vision? Because he has... Wait, that's one cut's vision. Never is player... Player are you, Never? Oh. Oh, I... Uh. Oh, never mind, that is Never. Oh, right, because it's shared vision. What am I thinking? So yeah, Never does see what's going on thanks to Radar. And Dying Front and N42K really don't see all that much, actually. Surprisingly enough, so yeah, that is... Well... That's a little bit of a shame for them, because N42K has been kind of over-expanding to the west side. Not a whole lot has been set up to defending against this. And we do see that Never and One Cut are actually going to be pushed back a bit, but still... They have solid map control over the southwest side, or the south side entirely. South half of the map pretty well. And this southeast setup has already been set up for static defense. The Rockos are going to be able to take out a defender, but they are going to go down in the process. Possibly take out two defenders? I'm not sure. I kind of doubt it. Able to take out a radar, though. That's not a bad shot. That really was a useful thing to do. But even then, we do see that Dynthrind losing quite a few of his forces there. Well, never coming in with, well, about half a dozen glaives. Or no, that's not never's glaives necessarily. That's Dynfron is also cloaky. A dozen glaives. He has a dozen glaives ready to move in again. A felon in play, but no real support. Just one thug. Sniper would help out in this case, though. No sniper under construction. Zeus could also help out, but the glaive is the worst choice, unfortunately. That being said, it doesn't matter as so much. m 4 k actually about to lose his commander, getting stunned out, getting by Redback, and down it goes. First commander death of the match is N42K. At this point, Never and One Cut have just been solidly ahead this entire game. Close, but solidly ahead. There hasn't really been anything that's been done that Dying Throne and N42K have gotten an advantage of. Though at this point, N42K has taken the west side of the map, and it is fairly solid. It's going to be difficult to dislodge that. Never should be able to do that with a sniper. If he gets a sharpshooter, he will have that. But he hasn't done so. And there isn't really anything that's being built for one cut. I mean, there is the the recklesses will help. They will weaken the shield somewhat before it gets too close. But still, a lot of damage is going to be dealt here. These glaives are all going to die. However, the felon actually getting attacked pretty directly. And thanks to the recluse support, these felons are actually going to go down. The felon goes down. The thug soon to go down. Is felon going down? No, not quite. The felon survives with 13 health. My goodness, how did that live? I know how that lived, it just had the thug support, and it still had enough shield energy to kill off the glaives, and the glaives did not focus fire, apparently. So that is unfortunate, but that, well, I should say, that is that is fortunate for 2k. He's got to be happy about that one. Saves his felon, keeps the west side of the map, damages the gets rid of a melee strider that never had. That's a nice little blow. Admittedly, never still has a solid position in his main base, but yeah. Containing never's expansion just a bit. So at this point, we are into the stage where the players are consolidating their territory. So never in one cut, pretty solidly on the south side. The the west center, that's a bit contested still. N42K has a pretty solid hold on it, but I'd say it's still kind of contested. Never is starting to surround that, and likely it's going to be taken apart. At this point, never one, never and one cut kind of have control over the west side of the map. East side of the map, Dynfreund is coming in very strong and should be able to take it out, actually. So it looks like... Who controls the east and who controls west has got to change. Metal Extractor and Lotus taking some damage from this Recluse. And Dying Friend taking out the Metal Extractor and Solar Collector over here. So yeah, one cut losing some of his economy. A little unfortunate for him. He does have more Recluses. Getting Hermits on top of that as well. Very mixed force. Was working on a Fusion Reactor 2. Has stopped that and I can't blame him. Though I can kind of see why he was doing that. His Wind Generators are running out. But yeah, I can't blame him for that. Also a little bit far away from the wind generators, so I can see why maybe for explosion's sake, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. If we look at the fusion reactor, it's explosion... Oh, come on. I... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I can't see the explosion radius? Darn. Okay, never mind. Normally you can if you hit the space bar, but apparently I can't because I'm a spectator. Anyway, Dynfriend is going to be taking a decent amount of damage. Here he's gonna lose 
that positioning, but he did manage to take out the Metal Extractors. That's what counts. That was a really good raid. Flamethrower and N42K still a little bit behind. And actually, N42K in a pretty pitched battle against defenders mostly, but a couple felons are really all it's going to take. However, one of the felons does actually, the whole felon ball losing its shields still thugs. That's why you have thug support. That is why thug support is a thing. Because otherwise, you run out of felon energy and that's it. Felons die. They really have no other support. If you have thug support, that is what you need. Nicely done there. So right now, Dying Throne has the biggest army, and everyone one cut are doing pretty well together for army, but mostly they have economy on their side, and Dying Throne is doing well with a reclaim. Yeah, his commander reclaiming pretty heavily. 19 build power, but he's upgrading too, so he's about to get even more build power, at least 21, probably 25. Let's see, fully upgraded? No, just 21. He didn't get another nano leaf. And that being said, one cut going for a center cut, getting quite a lot here. Recklesses and Hermits just... Pushing to the center, no Venoms as support, but still Recklesses and Hermits, no nice tank force just pushing in and they will be able to intercept this Aspis or they might be able to intercept the Aspis, stopping it from getting to the Felon Ball and making the Felon Ball darn near indestructible. However, Dynthrind able to intercept them and Hermits doing what they can to try to protect the Recklesses, but it's not enough. The Glaive is going to get back in there, tear apart the Recklesses and that will finish that attack. Although even then, no, there is enough, there's enough support from the Hermits, but the Recklesses do go down. That attack, unfortunately, simply donated metal. Not a bad, I mean, it's scouted too, but that was a lot more than you want for a scout. That was an all-out attack, and unfortunately did not work out. And now, one cuts Hermit up against a wall, trying to avoid the warrior, and will not even succeed in killing it, unfortunately. At the same time, N42K attacking from this west side of the map, and Dynthorn and N42K are really turning this around. They're getting back into the game, however, center is heavily controlled by Never and one cut. And I should point out that the center metal extractors are the same value, or center metal extractor is the same value as everything else. Everything is two in this map. Not really any special metal extractors. This is pretty normal. Standard is two per metal extractor, and that is what this map has. And M42K is running out of shield energy, but still got a decent amount. Has enough to keep going, keep attacking. Still draining quite a lot, but this Aspis is helping immensely. That being said, there is. There is still some hope here, but one never losing a lot of it, the southwest side of the map. He is keeping a lot, apparently, through Reclaim, because he doesn't have enough Metal Extractors. Although, with Overdrive, actually, he does. These Metal Extractors are double their normal output, thanks to Overdrive. And that Fusion Plant just about to be completed. He, like I said, needs a Pylon or even just a couple Wind Generators to connect it. Because right now, it is not on the grid. Actually, a Pylon would be a better option at this stage in the game. We are 12 minutes in the game. That's not a bad time for a Pylon once you have Fusion Reactor, Pylons... Pounds are worth it. However, Dying Front coming in from the east side as well, so very heavy attack along the sides, and basically M42 and Dying Front are flanking Never and One Cut. Never One Cut's all they have the center, never building a gunship plant as a secondary. No air switch apparently from anyone else. Nope, no one else goes for air switch. And actually, M42K. Oh, accidentally gave a factory. Meaning to give metal, accidentally donated a factory. That that happens sometimes. Sorted out, but yeah. A little bit confusing there. Regardless, Dynfrine does have a nice position here. Massive army, eight, almost 9,000 metal worth of army. Entirely in cloakies, by the way. Although it's, actually no, sorry, mostly in cloakies, half of it is cloakies, half of it is commander. Actually, three quarters of it is commander. He has, is that a level five comm? That is indeed a level five support commander that Dynfrine has. I don't know why, but that's what he has. And a crab is up for one cut, so he could push in with that once it gets good support force, which I imagine he will pretty soon. Going for more Hermits, Recklesses, I'm sorry, Hermits, Redbacks, Venoms. Same time, we do have an attack from N42K. Held off while never goes for Scythes. What he goes for as a solid attack, I'm not sure. Probably, well, not the Felon Ball, the Felon, wait, did I? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. The Felon Ball attacked at the same time that I was looking at, oh, great, that was dumb. I apologize, viewers. That was a poor cast choice there. Poor spectating. Oh well, happens. Anyway, one cut is going for a solid attack though. Pretty heavy attack with three, looks like three recklesses and five hermits. Wow, and a crab on top of that. That is a nice set of attacks. Those, the drones should be a nice hint of what's going on. Dying front coming in with his commander. If this commander goes down, I think the game will turn around once again. But nothing is in place. Never has to move his forces back. One cut going for some brawlers. Brawlers and black dons. Probably gonna try to build up a few of those. 
Once Never gets those, it will be quite useful, but just the one I doubt he's going to use it. However, the Scythes are coming in here. They're scouting around, and looks like they're going to go straight for the factory and caretakers. They do get spotted, however, and the Lotuses are unfortunately in the way. That factory not going to go down. Those Scythes able to get, just get rid of what they can. Trying to get rid of a Lotus, trying to get rid of a caretaker here or there. That won't do the trick, unfortunately. Once again, we have a bit of an indecisiveness problem, but yeah, there really wasn't an easy way through there. And N42K going for a gunship plant of his own. Well, Dynefront coming in along the east side of the map, that is going to be pretty huge. And no, actually, the gunship plant was not spotted, by the way. N42K does not have that spotted out, but he thinks he does, so that's good to note. So Dynefront is doing pretty well. If he, if he teamed up with N42K's shields, Beforehand, that would have worked beautifully. But even then, one guy has taken a ton of damage. Dying from in between what he has, two light particle beams, and all these companion drones and battle drones. That's just tearing apart one cut's base. He's losing pretty much everything. One cut has to retreat his commander, which is, hasn't been upgraded at all. I mean, Dying from commander has taken no damage. Brawler coming in, however, to try to turn the tide. It will help a bit. But even with that Dying from commander, able to tear apart one cut's base with a bit of support, one cut loses everything. Pretty much. His factory's down, his army's still up, but other than that, no. And Brawler in here. That Brawler about to go down. St still a crab, though. And this crab actually, if it's able to hit, it should get rid of Dynefront's commander. And down it goes! Dynefront losing his commander and getting back down to normal with army cost. 2.2 thousand. Never one cut still ahead in army, but Dynefront and N42K ahead in economy. Though, really, one cut just needs to rebuild a bit. Getting another spider factory, he needs to rebuild his metal extractors. He has weavers in play. So he has completely lost everything, and with that, they should be able to rebuild and go forward once again. And that crab is still alive, though with a lot of its support forces gone. Really, Redbacks and Venoms would be extremely useful right about now for support. Brawler helps out, but not really was necessary. Helpful, though. Very helpful. At least as support and mostly suppression fire. Pushing enemy forces back. Not enough damage to actually deal with these forces in time. The Glaives will tear it down before it tears down the Glaives, but it will keep the forces in place, and no, not even then, the Recluse not able to do anything. That Brawler unfortunately did nothing, or very little. It pushed away the forces. Dying Front's forces were forced to retreat, and one cut able to rebuild. Still, that was a very powerful attack, unlike with Never. Never was able to defend that almost effortlessly, but Dying, but Dying Front had a massive army there. Most of his commander, though, and losing that is a big blow, but even then, he still has a decent economy. He still is pushing a lot of care. Well, pushing 20 metal into his factory. Not really doing much else with it, and. Compared to the fact that One Cut is just now getting production up. His production is now just now online. Crab's still in play, however, and the Crab's tanking a lot of shots. Doing a nice job. Which is what it's supposed to do. Tank the shots, hit everything else. Although, even then, mostly thanks to killing the commander, that Crab is. Has, that is making. made five times its cost. That crab has in its kills. Doing a very good job there. Just need to go back and heal it up, but yeah, it's a good crab. However, it's still kind of tough. Dying Point did get map control over here. And for 2K still has control over the west side of the map. And rebuilding Shield Ball, no felon yet, but that's just. That's a question of yet. Black Dawn as well coming in for N42K, and at the same time, a couple brawlers and a Black Dawn up for. Never. And never still building cloakies as well, still building a lot more sides. He does have four sides. And they are moving in. They have scouted out this shield ball, so they know what's going on. And the felon is here. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. Anyway, just curious what they see. Never does see this all. He knows exactly what's going on. Felon here. Shield ball here. You can see everything. He doesn't really know. One cut doesn't really know what's going on here. Whenever one cut don't much know what's going on on the east side of the map. They know what's going on the west side of the map. And there's a flea back here as well, just to double check, just to know exactly what's going on. Now, on the other hand, oops, what the, oh, okay, I don't know. Anyway, on the other hand, Dying Throind is actually okay. He knows what's incoming force because it's incoming and it's actually tearing apart everything he has. One cut managing to rebuild a lot of his army, most of his army entirely actually, and never at twice the economy of anyone else. Same economy as pretty much everyone. Well, not quite everyone combined, but yeah. Never's in a great spot economically, using all that into gunships, mostly from Reclaim, but still. Actually spending all that cash quite well, and Dying Front losing most of his forces to the crab, honestly, but still the Redback's doing a good job in support. He's keeping everything else protected, and the crab is very nearly halfway healed. 
Now in for 2 k helping out Dynefroin, blocking the east side of the map, and it looks like we'll probably have an assault from the west side as well. A Razor is being built up along the west side, so gunship attack in the west is a little bit risky. Where are those scythes? Because if I know where those scythes are, then that will tell me where the main attack is coming in. Ah, there they are. The scythes are still in the base. They aren't doing anything yet. However, Shield Ball is incoming and a bit of a threat. I think the Crab should be able to deal with it, though. It does have splash damage. There is an Aspis. That's the big problem. If the Aspis Shields goes down, then everything else is pretty much dead, thanks to the splash damage. But if the Aspis Shield is still up, then it's a problem, and N42K not moving in here. He does have a couple Black Dons on the ready, but at the same time, against four black, against two Black Dons and four Brawlers from Never, it's going to be a little bit tricky to actually properly counterattack there. Dying Front is almost out of an army. Building more and more Rockos. Still Rocko Glyph Warrior, not a bad mix, but not enough of them. He is losing them, and N42K now choosing this time to move in for support. But the crab, okay, now, okay, Aspa Shield is down. The crab can attack into the, well, probably the thugs, actually, not so much the felon. However, the crab taking a decent amount of damage. The oh, Black Dawn shot was mostly friendly fire, though. But that Aspa Shield being used quite effectively, and the crab goes down. Thanks to moving at pretty much the wrong time, the crab does end up going down. And m 42 and Dengthorn can just, once again, waltz in. Not a whole lot of defenses were set up since the last attack. And one cut never... Not going a whole lot except for Never's gunships. If Never uses the gunships effectively, he can push back the attack right here, but I don't know what he's gonna do. However, a defender, well, defenders and tarantulas coming in just to deal with his Black Dawn. It's gonna take a little while, but still not a bad idea. That being said, Black Dawn's in the center of the base, trying to get rid of the factory. They will be able to do so right now. The factory's gonna go down. Down goes that second spider factory, and the commander is the next target. Thankfully, for one cut, another crowd came up, but. Unfortunately for one cut, he didn't have any real support units, which is a problem. However, never coming in along the east side of the map, sorry, west side of the map, with the Brawlers and the two Black Dons. This Razor really doesn't stand a chance, honestly, with everything here. Even with the Razor, it just needs to actually attack it. Attack it! Kill it! And never! Destroy n 42 Case Razor! Nope, he's not going for that. He's going for the Wind Generators, trying to kill everything else. Destroy all the economy that's been set up. Not a bad idea either. The fusion plant, by the way, is still up and running. And another spider factory has been rebuilt, but N42K coming in pretty heavily while N42K's base own base is being destroyed and never basically taking revenge for what Dying Frame did to one cut, avenging his partner. However, unfortunately, not able to get rid of the factory from the looks of it. It might be able to. Targeting the gunship plant, and the gunship plant does go down. The shield bot factory, not quite so lucky, but still, gunship plant able to go down. Needs ah oh, the caretakers would have been the best option though. That's the thing. He got rid of the caretakers that would be huge, but that is it. Never has lost all of his air force, though he has rebuilt some of it, but not about assault, still not quite enough. And a chainsaw being built up as well, just in case that happens again. Same time we do have Oh yeah, the shield ball came in. I keep ignoring the shield balls. Mostly because they don't do very well, honestly. Once they get into the base, the shield balls just sort of peter up and die. They also don't ever deal much damage, so. Not really much to look at. Everything was damaged, dealt by the gunships, and even the shield ball that attacked here didn't do much. Oh, never mind. It killed the. Wait, killed the Cloak by factory. When did that happen? Okay, I missed that. I apologize. Two v two is. This is why I have Flores with me because I have an extra set of eyes. Because two v two, there was a lot going on. A bit tricky to pay attention to all of it, but yeah, that that happens. Anyway, Dying Front is getting rid of yet another brawler. Not a really good idea to try to fight gunships against Cloaky bots. This generally doesn't work out. One cut has the spider factory up. Never still going for more and more gunships, but that chainsaw halfway done. About a minute and a half left. That is Never's window to attack safely. He can't probably deal with a 3,000 damage in one shot, though, especially if an Aspis has been constructed from the factory right away, but that doesn't look likely right now. Actually, the factory is fairly vulnerable thanks to the fact that there aren't any shields around it. Neither are there really a lot of shields around here, but there is still an Aspis right next to it. A lot of the Wind Drainers did go down. That is that is something, I guess, but honestly, not that big of a deal. There are so many Wind Generators, and they're actually producing a decent amount of energy. Though, even with that, actually, no, never mind, that was somewhat useful, because N42K can't easily shield regen. Or rather, all of his energy is going into shield regen and not as much into production, so that's actually being a reduction bottleneck. So never mind, that was actually a useful attack.
And Heavy Tank Factory coming in from Never for his ground. Well, that's a very interesting choice, especially in this map, being that it is difficult for vehicles to get around. They can't, in fact, go up this ramp here. This is vehicle impathable. Vehicles have to go around the back. Just to point out, because that will be soon very much applicable. That being said, those spiders can go everywhere, so one cut is pretty solid. And we'll be able to get rid of Dying Throne's forces once again, though Dying Throne has several hundred or several thousand metal in here worth of army, but that's going to go down pretty easily to the Redbacks. And yeah, everything just going down. One cut losing very little of nothing. I don't even know if lost anything, honestly. And this Trident about to go down as well to a Hermit of all things. Wow, that Trident is just not moving. And down it goes, because it was just staying stationary. That was what was surprising. I thought they had strafe mode. Normally gunships do have strafe mode. They don't just hang around dying. But apparently that wasn't the case. And Scythe's in here for never. We'll be able to get rid of another, maybe another metal extractor. I don't know. Not even. Nope. Just one. Really, the caretakers, that's what he needs to go for. If he gets rid of the caretakers, that would be the best thing he could do practically with Scythe's. That being said, though, it doesn't much matter. One Cut is doing most of the pushing. Dying Point losing the east side of the map, and One Cut will be able to reclaim it, having lost at the beginning of the game, but now getting it back. And Dying Point, most of his forces are in anti air. Wait a, a dozen. Or nearly a dozen gremlins. No, over a dozen gremlins. 16 gremlins, actually. That is not the most useful because. The gunships right now... Okay, actually, never mind. I'm exactly wrong. That is the most useful. The gunships are moving in. Spiders are still going to be dealing a lot of damage, but the gunships will go down pretty quickly to the gremlins. Brawl is going to do what they can, but the gremlins should be able to tear them apart. The Black Tons not even able to get a shot in. Wisely retreating. One of the brawlers goes down. Not quite two. That being said, the spiders still able to push in and get rid of everything else. And 4 2 coming in with a couple dozen bandits to try to help out, but... I don't know. Even with that, I guess with the Redbacks? The Redbacks are out of position, though. So, yeah, all these... The forces on the west flank of One Cut's army are going to go down, but the Redbacks are moving back into position. The Venoms... No, Venom is dead. That won't help. However, Brawlers and Black Dons are not dead, so they will be able to help. And the Redback, able to do quite a lot of damage and take out all those bandits. Very effectively getting rid of the bandits. That didn't do much of anything at all. And I think this is going to be game. Cloak Bat Factory going to go down for Dying Thring. Down it goes. And I think that's it. The caretaker's probably going to reclaim it automatically. Gremlin's pushing back what they can. And the brawler is going to go down, but still, they got rid of a factory. Shield by factory would be the biggest thing to get rid of, though. If they can get rid of that, that'll be game. But I think that even with that, it's going to be game. One cut just going to sweep through from here. And that will be it. And apparently this... I guess the chainsaw operator decided just to commit treason today. Because that chainsaw isn't firing. Very odd. Very odd thing to have happen. Doesn't matter though, we do have a tank follow up, so that'll have to go around the back, but still, that is an open path right now. Dying Throne's base is gone. He has some army, he has a metal extractor somewhere. Over here. He has one metal extractor, and that's a. That can't be it. That's just some reclaim somewhere. But yeah, that's basically it. He's got nothing. He really has nothing right now. And one cut just sweeping through with the spiders. Another gunship line coming in for M42K, but that is too little too late. Character is going to go down soon after, which really should have gone down a while ago, but hey, they're going to go down now. And Dying Throne's base being finished off. Which doesn't matter. Honestly, it does not matter. M42K is the one who needs to be focused on. And it will soon... Ah, there we go. Chainsaw now finally firing. It looks like it's actually blocked off by stuff. No matter, though, that is game. One cut and never win. Nicely done. That was kind of close. They... They turned it around. Well, I had to turn it around them and then turn it back around to win. Got another game for you guys. After this, just, just a moment. It will be shorter. I promise it will be shorter. Be between one cut and steel blue on desert cliffs. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.